Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're going to be doing a build guide for a budget-based gaming PC that's going to specifically use probably some of the best components you can get out in the market. Specifically, we're going to be basing the system on the Intel Pentium G3258 unlocked processor. This is a dual core chip that we can easily overclock to over the 4 gigahertz mark using the stock cooler. We're also going to pair this with probably one of the best Nvidia cards for the price, the GTX 960. So what we're gonna do is go through the step-by-step -step build guide, and then we're gonna actually benchmark this PC to see how the 1080p gaming performance is. And in most circumstances, you're gonna find that this is gonna be a pretty impressive machine, especially at this price point. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now at the center of this build is going to be the Intel G3258. This is a fully unlocked multiplier processor. It's a dual core chip. It has no hyper threading, but for dollar for dollar, core to core, especially paired with a Z series motherboard, when you start overclocking this thing, this is gonna be a very capable little chip that will give us adequate performance for 1080p gaming. It has minimal bottlenecking as you can get, especially at this uh, low price point of around 60 to $70. Now, of course, the CPU isn't the latest generation. It's using socket 1150. And uh, even though the new processors are great, there's still not a real replacement CPU on the lower end spectrum in the current generation of Intel processors that has a fully unlocked multiplier. And again, the cool thing about this processor is if you can find one used, you can typically get a really great deal for it. Now the motherboard that we're going to be using is the micro ATX version of the Gigabyte Z97. Now we do definitely need a Z series motherboard to get the most overclocking performance out of our Intel processor. Now typically any Z series motherboard is a little bit more pricey, especially when uh, buying new. They typically retail anywhere between $80 to $100. But if you can find one used like I did, you can uh, pick one up for around the $55 mark, under $60 typically. And uh, at that value point, it's definitely worth it and it's going to give us a lot more capabilities with our overclocking needs. Now in terms of storage, since we really can't spend too much because we want to be around the $400 price point, we uh, only can uh, really get this, which is a 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. And uh, same thing with RAM, we can't really spend too much and four gigabytes is just going to be at the bleeding edge of what will make our system run and uh, you'll be able to play most of your games on there, but don't think about multitasking. But of course you can always add storage and more RAM later on in the future. Now, the main thing is going to be our GPU, and what we're using is the uh, GTX 960 from Zotec. Uh, typically, you can find these for around $190, uh, brand new, and some are a little bit cheaper. Just any GTX 960 will do, but the Zotec ones have a nice overall compact form factor. They're very power efficient, and the cooler is pretty darn good as well. Now, in terms of our power supply, we're going to keep things as basic as possible, and uh, we're going to be using the 500 watt uh, 80 plus a bronze certified uh, PSU from EVGA. Nothing too fancy, like fully modular or anything like that. But I think for in and around $30, you really can't complain with this PSU. And uh, the same thing goes for the case. We're going to be using the Antec uh, VSK4000E, very compact micro ATX uh, platform. It has a good overall, simple overall design that nobody's going to really complain about. And it's a nice uh, box to put everything into. Now, all in all, my specific grand total was about 406 USD. Now, uh, keep in mind that I pretty much use all brand new parts except for the motherboard. The motherboard cost me around half price compared to what it is brand new, which will definitely save you in the long run. And again, if you can find any of these parts in good condition used, definitely do so. There's always some great deals every now and again on Amazon. And of course, exact pricing will always vary depending upon sales and where you are in the world. So definitely check out the descriptions down below for more detailed information. Okay, so now let's start building building our computer. Now, the only thing that you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver, and that's pretty much it. You want to make sure that you're free from any electrostatic uh, discharge before you touch any sensitive pieces of equipment. And the first thing that we're going to do is install our CPU like we always do. So we're going to basically take off the cover plate on the CPU socket, and we're going to lift up the retention arm assembly to free up the socket. And here we can see that there's a triangle on the processor that corresponds with a triangle on 
on the socket itself so we can basically use that for our orientation and then you can gently lower down the CPU into place and once the processor is sitting in nicely into the socket we can lock down everything as it was before. Now since we're keeping things as economical as possible we're going to be using the stock cooler that came with our processor and installation is pretty simple and straightforward. There's basically four little pegs that go right through the PCB and you want to make sure that uh, you're locking the pegs down as evenly as possible and everything is level and you have good contact with the processor. You don't have to worry about any kind of thermal paste since it's pre-installed. Moreover we can now uh, connect the power for our CPU fan. Moving forward we're just going to install our single stick of DDR3 memory and again very simple and straightforward process. There's uh, really only one stick to worry about so just go ahead and pop that into the memory dim slot on the motherboard. Next we're going to install our power supply directly into the case and uh, you're just going to basically place it at the top of the case and there's four Phillips head screws usually provided either with the case or with the PUCU itself to fasten everything down. Thereafter we're just going to insert the motherboard IO shield at the back of the case and again for the specific orientation just refer to the way the motherboard is going to fit inside the case. Once the IO shield is installed you can go ahead and uh, start screwing the standoff screws for your motherboard and again refer to the motherboard in terms of how many standoff screws you need. Typically six will do in order to secure the perimeter of the board to the case. Thereafter you can gently lower down your motherboard directly onto the case and you can use those standoff screws as guides and once you have the proper placement for everything go ahead and lock everything down by screwing in all those Phillips head screws. Next it's time to install all those little front panel connectors for your power LED as well as the power and restart switch and you can always refer to the manual for the exact placement. Typically uh, it's pretty uh, simple and straightforward where everything is uh, laid out uh, very clearly. It just takes a little bit of patience in terms of getting those connectors into the right place and after you can go ahead and insert your front panel audio connections and uh, the uh, USB connections at the front of the case. At this point it's probably a good time to supply power to our motherboard and vital connections so we can now plug in our 24 pin power connection for our motherboard as well as uh, the 8 pin power connections for the CPU and after if you want to connect any of your case fans you can do so either directly into the PSU or onto any port on the motherboard labeled system fan. Now moving on to the best part of the build and that's inserting the graphics card into our PCI slot. You just want to make sure that you've cleared up any of the PCI Express covers on the case itself so everything is nice and free to uh, insert your graphics card into. So pretty simple and straightforward there and you can always fasten it down using some Phillips screws directly into the case. And uh, go ahead and uh, make sure that you're powering everything. Uh, here you only need an 8 pin PCI power connection from the graphics card to the PSU. Last but certainly not least we're going to install our mechanical hard drive into one of the bays and then screw it down to secure it into the case and then we're going to simply uh, get a SATA cable that came with the motherboard plug it into a free available port on the motherboard and then we're going to simply supply our hard drive with the SATA data and SATA power from our PSU. And in essence we're now done our build and ready to start installing all of our software and start tweaking some of our settings to really get the most performance possible out of this system. Now in terms of our overclock settings uh, what I personally did is I set the CPU clock ratio to about 46 giving us a overclock to a 4.6 gigahertz on the turbo end and in terms of our voltage I set the core voltage to about 1.28 volts. This is the sweet spot for my chip and even with the stock cooler running at a pretty high RPM this is probably the best performance I'm going to get on my particular setup with this chip. Obviously if I upgrade the cooler I can probably get up to 4.8 uh, gigahertz possibly uh, with better cooling performance but even with the settings that we have it's a huge upgrade from the stock configuration. If you look at our Cinebench R15 benchmark compared to the stock frequency that gets a score about 227 we get a pretty decent upgrade of 328 clocked around 4.6 gigahertz. So as you can see there's definitely a lot of capabilities with this chip if you're going to overclock. If you're not going to overclock, kind of robbing yourself of the potential capabilities of what this processor has to offer. Now in terms of our uh, graphics card settings, we did also overclock our GTX 960 to about 1360 megahertz on the GPU core clock and the memory has been also overclocked at just under 2000 megahertz. Now with all that said, let's actually take a look at the graphics capabilities of this machine and see what this thing is really capable of with all of our tweaks and all of our settings configured right.
Now really on that guys, that's really it. As you saw from the uh, gaming benchmark results, the PC is very impressive, gives you a lot for the money. And of course, this is gonna be an excellent everyday PC, not only for gaming, but using the particular graphics card, it's gonna really excel at the 1080p resolutions. And you can set those detail settings fairly high. Now, obviously this isn't gonna blow out the water of most high-end gaming PCs, but it's certainly gonna be a lot more powerful and versatile than any of the current generation consoles that you're gonna get out there. Again, most of the current gen consoles don't even render their games at 1080p resolutions. Here you can control all your detail settings uh, and uh, the gaming performance is just gonna uh, keep going up and up as we have better driver support and as you tweak your system further and further. But really, other than that guys, that's really it. Now, if you're re interested in seeing how this budget-based CPU does against our other budget-based CPU, which is based on AMD parts, well, stay tuned for the third video of the series. Uh, if you want, you can actually go to it right down in the description down below or click on the screen right now and we can do a side-by-side head-to-head comparison between these two budget bills if you're kind of on the fence in terms of which uh, computer to make. But really, for this video, that's really it. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your support and we'll see you later. Take care.